enough of the he said, she said on Love is Blind season three reunion? I'm here to do something different in this video. I'm calling it the therapy edit. Imagine instead of couples arguing that they went to therapy and took accountability for their parts. Imagine if you had a trained professional leading the reunion. Enough of cutie gate. We've got therapy gate. Follow along as Zanab and Cole give their apologies to one another. How Matt comes clean what he needs to do with Colleen and Bartice and Nancy say what we wish they all would have. Grab your popcorn and a drink. This one's going to be good. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Welcome to Reality TV Therapy with me, Dr. Diane. Welcome back. I'm Dr. Diane Strakowski here, and I'm switching it up in this video because we've heard enough about people's attachment styles. I already did a prediction video. Hell, and you don't need to see toxic couples arguing anymore. What do we really need to do to heal? Well, as a therapist, I want to show you something different. How successful couples would handle difficult conversations. And the only way to do that is to enact it. So I'm here for all of that. First off, I want to dig in or peel the orange between Zanab and Cole. What I want to do is slow it all down, go a little bit deeper, talk about what was behind the behaviors with Zanab and Cole. Because as we know, in couples therapy, it usually takes two. And it's so important to talk about context. In relationship, context matters. But we can't pick apart just one or two moments, we have to think of the thousands of hours of interaction between this couple and what's beneath all of that. Okay, so how I'm going to dissect this video is I'm going to talk about each of the characters and ask them what they were attracted to in their partner. Why? Because unconsciously, we are oftentimes attracted to traits in our partner that we're missing in ourselves. And it's so important for them to acknowledge that. Round two, I'm going to ask each partner in the couple what they could have learned. I call that a reality check. The reality check is look in the mirror and what can you learn about yourself. With a little bit of time, think about what would have happened if each of them had therapy. They got to process all of it as they were watching it and think about a redo. Because that's what was missing here taking full accountability for one's behavior. And I also know that Vanessa and Nick are not trained professionals. They're trained entertainers. They may not have these types of therapy skills. So Netflix, this is my interview for you, how I might have handled it if I was the professional. I'll call this take one. If I were the host, I would want to start with some ground rules. And I would say to everyone, before we begin, each of you has been asked to comment, but comment on your own healing journey. You see, remember, it got kind of out of control there. But I would want to take control. And just FYI, if things get out of control, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to shut that down because the point of a reunion is about redemption. The point about redemption is taking accountability for our parts not continuing to be angry at the other person or tearing someone down. The point is that if you want people to open up, you have to be able to shut them down too. That's where we start in the reunion, is talking about how I'm going to time out if things get out of control. I've spoken with each of you today about your attraction towards your partner and maybe some things that you've learned in the therapy that you've been doing for the last year and a half. Now let's start with Zanab and Cole. This first round I'm calling the attraction round. Zanab, why don't you tell us, the viewers, the followers, what you've learned in therapy about why you were unconsciously chose Cole as your partner. Cole, what's not to love about you? So many things. I love you and you're Christian and adventuresome and uh, you have a big family. So many things that I was attracted to. I thought you would bring out more playfulness in me. 
Thank you, Zainab. Now we're gonna to turn to Cole. Cole, it's your turn. Same question. What attracted you to Zainab in the pots? Zainab, Zay, I was attracted to you because you said that prayer and wow, that touched me. And you weren't like the other girls. You were deep and serious. And I felt like that would bring that out in me. Thank you both for your candor. Now, do you agree that while love is blind, maybe marriage shouldn't be? Next is the accountability round. Zanab, please tell Cole all the things you've learned since the show aired. Tell us what your reality check has been. I know you've done some work on yourself and we discussed a few of those thoughts. Cole, I wanna go first. All the things that I've learned in therapy to take accountability for my actions. I should have not been so uptight. Who cares about your towels? I should have just eaten the chicken even though it was unseasoned. And my biggest regret is what I did at the altar. I should have kept this between us and just said, I don't. And then I could have pulled you when we could have talked about it later. So I have my own insecurities that have nothing to do with you. And then there's just some things about you that I felt like we weren't good for each other, right? You needed someone more playful. I needed someone more serious. And that's really about it. And that's enough. I have to know that I don't need everybody else to agree with me that we weren't right. And I apologize for that, for what I did. Thank you, Zanab. Now I'm gonna to turn to Cole. Cole, now it's your turn. Thanks, Zay. You saying that makes it easier for me to take accountability for my stuff. What I learned looking in the mirror is I should have never commented on Colleen's looks and said in the real world anything. So many other things. I should have not called you passive aggressive or bipolar. I didn't even know what those terms meant. I should have picked up my dumbass towels, flushed my toilet, not weaponized my incompetency, and maybe ordered out. But truly, I wasn't there for you. I didn't make you feel like a special bride. I will never comment on a woman's food and what she eats. And I need to work on myself. I learned a lot. And I do apologize to everyone that made you feel uncomfortable. That's on me. Sorry. Thank you both, Zanab and Cole, for your authentic response here. And I do want to address this too, and thank you. Cole for saying that you didn't know what bipolar was because I think this is a really important thing and I want to pause and talk with people about what a true bipolar person is. I want to pause here as a therapist and talk about, I so appreciate that Cole mentioned that he didn't know what passive aggressive and what bipolar means. Let's discuss bipolar. So as a trained professional, a psychologist, we take these terms very seriously. Someone who has bipolar disorder, and I'm holding up the Diagnostic Statistical Manual, this goes to show you what it entails to actually call someone bipolar. And I wanna read some things to you. I think you might find this interesting. For a diagnosis of bipolar disorder, it's considered a mood disorder. It's necessary to meet the following criteria for having a manic episode, also along with a major depressive episode. What does that mean, a manic episode? you need to have, it's a distinct period of time where you have abnormally and persistently elevated, expansive, or irritable mood and abnormality and persistently increased goal-directed activity or energy lasting at least one week and present most of the day, nearly every day for any duration or hospitalization might be necessary. That's very different, right? than saying you're erratic in your mood about me, that we have ups and downs in our relationship. So when people are using this word and saying you're bipolar, that's not that you're indecisive. This is entirely different. This is on axis one, meaning you come into treatment for this. And by the way, bipolar people oftentimes are bipolar for nine years before they correctly get the diagnosis. So I don't know whether Xanab has any of those, but this is not something minor. Not only would you have an inflated sense of grandiosity, decreased need for sleep, more talkative, flights of ideas or subjective experience, 
Thoughts are racing, distractibility, increase in goal-directed activity, excessive involvement in activities that have high potential for painful outcomes, unrestrained buying episodes, sexual indiscretions, foolish business investments. Can you hear the severity? So you would have that, a manic episode, along with a major depressive episode, which I could read all of that to you as well. But this is why we get very cautious about using those terms because A, if you are someone who experiences bipolar, you don't want to water that down. You would feel insulted by that. But to call, to suggest that someone has a serious mood disorder when you don't even know what it means is not fair. You can get my point. So that's why I want to put this word of caution to call. And hopefully, Zanib, if you're watching this, you would appreciate that as well. Now, moving along, what would you think if Zanib in particular had apologized first? Because the rest of us were sitting watching all of this and there's been a lot of controversy. Was Zanib lying about the whole cuties episode? She didn't know that it was gonna be played. Why did the producers choose to play that instead of intervene? These are all questions we'll never know. I want to also digress and talk a little bit as a couples therapist. So imagine you're in conflict with your partner and you go in for couples therapy. And oftentimes in training, we do this, we actually videotape a couple. You videotape the couple fighting and you play it back. And you know what people see? They see what they felt because they can watch the same video and deny something based upon the experience they had while the video was filming. So we could say that clearly Zanab was lying, that she told everyone that he was policing her food. But remember, context is important. She truly feels that Cole is policing her food because he didn't make her feel good as a bride. He didn't make her feel good the day after they had sex. And that was the context. So when you add fuel to that fire, is Anna really lying? I don't think so. That is how she felt. She felt that he put her down and he was policing her food. Now Cole, on the other hand, feels very differently. He's just asking, hey, sweetie, why haven't you eaten? Gosh, we're going to a big meal. And one could say there was no harm, no foul there. But you see, it's not a matter of lying, it's a matter of perception. So even in the couples that I work with, a videotape, as you think, should be evidence to point out something, and yet it isn't. Keep that in mind because I feel like people have been incredibly hard, and for me, this was really about production, saying, mm, we're gonna choose to highlight on this story, why? because I think there are actually two other bigger stories like Colleen and Matt and even Bartise and Nancy. So what do you think of that? But instead, we take up a lot of time and energy with this episode. And that's where I think I'm looking at production. I'm not looking at the couple per se. So now imagine instead of the host, we have a therapist who's handling this and people are coming for coal. Whoa. Whoa. Okay, you guys, I feel like we're getting a little heated here. Time out. Remember, I talked about the ground rules. We're each going to stay to our own lane. And then I'm going to ask you how you are feeling about things, not about how you're feeling about other people's stuff. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Next up, let's talk about Colleen and Matt. Because this is a couple that I was actually most worried about, and I'm sure you were too. And it's not about a laughing matter. Clearly, this couple is attracted to each other for some real reasons. Matt has gone through a lot with his ex, and while all of us can have compassion for that, right from the beginning, I'd have to wonder about his readiness. Has he grieved? Has he talked about the process in therapy? Because what happens when we don't is we take our unresolved issues and translate those into the next relationship, and we see that. Colleen, unfortunately gets the short end of that stick. But what might the process have looked like if they both got individual therapy? Now I say individual therapy for a very particular reason, instead of couples therapy, because Colleen at this point, I don't know her situation. 
I don't know if that look on her face in the reunion was because she didn't like what was going to be played with her and Cole, or was she scared? People said, blink twice, Colleen, if you're in trouble. This is the whole point. I want to talk about this very sensitively. Is this a potential domestic violence situation? I don't know. I certainly hope that people are checking on them, and I certainly hope that there are professionals involved. But to me, Colleen's small infraction at the pool with, with Cole was much different than Matt's strong response to her, threatening to leave, being harsh and critical. And while Matt credited Colleen for being honest, I felt like there was so much more that wasn't addressed here. And we're kind of normalizing that there are these fights and there's a little fist bump between Matt and Nick, marriage second time around, but this to me lacked sensitivity. Can Colleen, is she learning to speak up more? Is she not being such a people pleaser? So this is how I would imagine Colleen and Matt handled it. First, let's talk to the two of them about what attracted them to each other. So yeah, I was attracted to Colleen for all kinds of reasons. She's a ballerina. She's great. She's got great energy. I, I was attracted to that. And I think, really, I too hoped that she would bring out some lightness in me. Maddie, Matt, Matt, so many things that attracted me to you. That you saw that I was more than a ballerina. That there was something in you, in your sadness, in your grief, that attracted me to you because it was deeper and you saw something deeper in me. And I love that. I love you. And for me, attraction is not really the issue between this couple, right? It's more that Matt is highly triggered and he's triggered because he hasn't done his work, because he hasn't put to rest. And so therefore his interactions with Colleen are going to be highly charged. He doesn't trust her. He thinks that she's really more interested in Cole than she says, but she's doing the best she can to squash that. I'd worry that she was taking too much responsibility. So now let's watch and see what reality checks and what either them could have, would have, should have learned in therapy. Next, please talk about your reality check, what you've learned about yourself, and in the process, let people know what you're still working on so maybe we can see and soften our perspective a little bit. Now, me doing a reality check was one of the toughest damn things I ever had to do because I had to watch myself back on tape, see my negative energy, how possessive I was, how controlling I was, how I was pushing Colleen away. And I only hope that Colleen, you can forgive me because I'm working on myself. I am. Uh, I'm therapy. I'm doing deep breathing. I'm doing meditation. I got to learn to trust myself, heal my own grief before I can be good for you. And so, yeah, we'll take our time about moving in because I just want to make this right. I don't like hearing that people think I'm a wife beater, that um, you should be scared of me. Um, I got my work to do. I do. And I'm committed to it. I've learned that it would have been better if I was more like Raven. I would have shut down Cole immediately. That was on me. I'm learning. I learned also that by the fact that I did that, that that wasn't all the issues in our relationship. You do, as you said, have issues too, big ones. And I want to hold you to that because the only way this is going to work is if I have boundaries. I'm not such a people pleaser, especially with you and you continue to grow and learn by yourself. But I'm not sure I wanna move in until it's safe to do so. And I need to know that you're gonna do the work and continue doing the work because I've gotta feel safe with you, that's it. A lot of people have been coming forward worried about her, why? Because many of us who do watch have maybe had our own traumatic relationships. We were, involved with a narcissistic person who might have been abusive. And so you can see that people see hints of that in Matt's behavior 
and therefore they're going to respond. Therefore, they're going to be worried about that. But also remember, editing can be a wicked thing. They show us certain parts of it. I don't know the rest of it. So I'm going to leave this to them. And hopefully again, what I said, if there was therapy intervention, I would be more hopeful. Now, if this was really happening in the real world, I would be happy about that. If Matt was working on his anger issues, realizing that it's not good, it's never healthy to threaten to leave your partner. If Colleen was standing up more for herself, being less of a people pleaser, all of these things would give me pause, would make me feel more hopeful about this couple. I imagine you would feel the same. And my last piece of advice for Colleen and Matt is I would say please stay off social media. I've talked about this on my Instagram. The problem is the public never forgets. You are going to be inundated with messages and it's very hard to be with someone that other people don't approve of. This is why we see higher divorce rates in public couples. This is why oftentimes on reality TV, couples don't stay together because social media will be pushing you DMs. Girl, run, you shouldn't do this. Boy, you deserve more. People also will put bids in for affection and attention to these strangers they watch on TV. So we have to be very careful. And I would say for this couple to have the best chance for success, get off of social media, go someplace, check out, focus on it, but get really clear about what's working and what isn't. And if it isn't, divorce is always an option. I would never encourage someone to stay in a relationship where they're not getting their needs met or heaven forbid something worse than that. But that's why individual therapy is very purposeful and very helpful. We might see more in the year when they do the reunion after that, after the altar. Next, we have Bartise and Nancy. And some people thought that Bartise escaped without much controversy. Some say that Nancy ignored the rag flags. Clearly, there was tension leading up to this decision. Imagine, though, how much further along Nancy might have been if she got angry at Bartise, if she did her work in therapy, if she learned that she trusted him too much, and maybe she trusted herself more. And Bartise, he has to own his part too. It was quite a setup to talk about Raven. Forget that honesty is the best policy. When you love someone or have a fiance, you shut the thought of other people down. We could all see that. And it's not about you, Bartise, and what you want. That was a common theme. But he ended up talking about Nancy without a filter, expecting her to be his best friend. It doesn't work like that. Let's roll the tape about what these two saw in each other. Nancy, in the pods, I thought you were great. Raven said no, you said yes. Seems like we had enough in common. I really liked your culture, your background. I didn't know you were liberal. What can I say? You said yes, and, but looks do count, right? Love is not blind. Bartise, to be honest, there were so many things about you I found attractive. But here's the thing, there were also red flags. You pretended that you were easygoing and maybe even liberal. And I missed that because you were talking about other things like your athleticism. And I sort of missed that. But you, ooh, you, I'm not so sure if I'm attracted to you anymore. And what can Nancy learn and what can Bartise learn as a reality check to themselves from how they might benefit from therapy? Nancy, I've got some big reality checks. I'm looking at the play-by-play. -play. I realize I shouldn't have set you up with my sister. That was between you and I. That was private. I brought her in. I don't know. Um, I shouldn't have called Raven a smoke show. No woman wants to be told that. I get that now. Therapy's been helpful for me. And finally, at the altar, I shouldn't have just said I don't without giving you anything else. I didn't show any remorse, so no wonder your family came for me. Your brother wanted to beat me up. Your mother was tough on me. I kind of deserved that. I should have shown a little bit more. Like behind the scenes, I was crying. I was upset, but I didn't show that to you. And you really do deserve more. And I got wigged out about your ex having money. And um, yeah, that's on me. So 
Hey, Nancy, I'm sorry. You deserve better. There were so many reality checks for me. I don't know. But mainly to say something when I see the red flags. And next time any man says to me, another woman is a smoke show, we're out. Because I've learned that I have to stand up for myself. I have to speak back. And just because I want to get married, I shouldn't say yes to everyone. I should say, wait, I don't like the way you're treating me. And I need to learn to have better boundaries. After all, I bring assets into this relationship and I didn't like how that was handled. Honestly, I think I've just learned more about myself to trust myself and to never put myself in that situation again. So my reality check is to look inside and trust myself better. Let's talk a little bit more about Nancy. Was she truly blindsided or did she just ignore the red flags? Because I think it's somewhere in the middle. There's so much editing, we don't know what happens. Maybe he did tell her he was all in and so she felt truly blindsided. But for me, the biggest miss was Bartise not taking more accountability for being at the altar. Because here's the thing, the lesson that we can learn in all of this is during a breakup, what do people want? Do they want brutal honesty? No, they want softness. They want a sense that you're hurting too. And while we saw Bartise crying when he got that bag from Nancy, we didn't see that affect at the altar. And that's why Nancy was going after him. And that's why her family went after him. Because in that moment, Bartise was very cold. I'm sure he needed to be to protect himself to say, I'm going to say no here and I'm going to cut myself off from emotions. But that cutoff didn't allow Nancy to see that he was hurting. It made her feel dismissed and wouldn't you. So in a breakup, what's most important, if you want to help your partner with closure, show them that they matter, that you care, that this is difficult for you. Because if she had, I really do believe that Nancy would be further along in her healing. Keep that in mind for your own breakups, that brutal honesty is not what we want. People want closure. And by the way, Bertice, we didn't need to know about your sex life either. That wraps up the reunion therapy edition, but I'd like to summarize by my three biggest reality checks. Again, reality check, looking in the mirror. Number one, be careful with your words and your affect. We saw that with Cole and Zanab. Zanab thinks that she's sweet and nice, but she can't see that she's also a bit critical. Cole, be careful with your words. Again, honesty is not the best policy, but instead successful couples support one another. And say, for example, that Zay did have bipolar. I read you that whole list of symptoms. This would be something that a couple has to deal with together, with softness, with compassion, with support. Not something that you talk about flippantly. Number two, we learn, own your own history. Do your own work. With Matt and Colleen, this is the important storyline that gets missed. We all can come into relationship with negative experiences, but if you don't do the work on yourself to handle your grief, to handle that negativity, you may sabotage your next relationship. And if that happens to you, remember what is yours versus what is theirs. Say, hey, you know what? I don't think this is my issue. Is this your stuff? Be accountable. And number three, don't ignore the red flags or think that things are gonna get better. If things are not good in an engagement, stop, halt. Marriage is not gonna make this better. Fascinating what we find out in couples therapy is that those issues that were there at the start get only magnified and become worse at the end. So I don't see this as success or not because not all couples were meant to be. It is an experiment. Now let me know what you thought of my therapy version of the experiment. Did you like it better than the reunion? Thanks for your feedback.